tastemakers hi family hey everyone hope you're doing well today today and if you're new here hello and welcome and today I am working on a puff pastry pizza I just came up with this again I'm doing a pantry challenge going through my freezer refrigerator pantry pulling out things that need to be eaten I haven't been to the grocery store in a month and I'm going to try to make it a couple more weeks because I have food in this house. Okay, so I'm going, I got this puff, puff pastry. There's two sheets in here. I'm going to use one. I got this for an appetizer, an appetizer around the holidays. I never got around to it. So I'm going to do something with it now because I have this mozzarella cheese. I haven't opened up. Got a pack of. Uh, pepperoni you know during football season at, you know at the store they have a lot more pepperoni and stuff around people are making pizzas and I like some vegetables on my pizza so I have this three pepper and onion blend three pepper and onion blend that's, yeah that's what it says and some Italian seasoning and tomato sauce and I have some like pre-made pizza sauce, so much sugar in it, because I'm on a diet. Doctor put me on a low fat, low salt, low everything, like can I eat at all? But you know, this is what this food is doing to our bodies. You know, it's uh, a lot of these prepared foods and processed foods are tearing us up. So once you get a few decades under your belt, you just have to start watching it. So. This I can just, this is a no salt added tomato sauce, but it does have like citric acid in it. And the puff pastry, you know, this is a refined carbohydrate. This is white, made out of white flour. And so our pancreas, our body really reacts poorly to this stuff. But I wanted to, I was reading the ingredients on this puff pastry. You know, it's really, they package this stuff up so cute. It's cute. And so to soften some of the blow of the carbs on this, you know, that's why I got the peppers, you got some cheese, and we and I got some processed meat here. So, you know, when we eat this a whole lot, you know, it's not good for us. But uh, but I like when when I read this, the back of it, it says Pepperidge Farm Inc. in Norwalk, Connecticut. Okay, this product contains contains bioengineered food ingredients. The ingredients from corn, soy, and cotton seed in this product, in this product come from genetically modified crops. Okay, so if you want to learn more, you go to pepperagefarm.com because it does have a lot of enriched flour, water, vegetable oils, palm, soybean, hydrogenated cotton seed, high fructose corn syrup. See, that's the stuff that gets, causes us to get, uh, you know, high blood sugars and all that stuff. Salt, mono and diglycerides, soy lecithin. Okay, so you get the idea. Okay, so, but I'm using this today. I'm going to eat this today. And, uh, yeah, so we wonder why. You know, we we don't feel well, feel well, we're getting sick. Uh, like this, this pepperoni, sodium, 520 milligrams of sodium. You get five grams of protein. But look, out of this pepperoni has pork, beef, salt, contains 2% or less of water, dectrose, spices, lactic acid, starter culture, oleo. Oli rest, I don't even know, of, of paprika, garlic powder, sodium nitrate, BHA, BHT, and citric acid. Those are like the last items. Okay, so consumed in high doses. I'm sure this stuff is carcinogenic, okay? But guess what? I'm going to try it today. I'm going to eat it today, okay? So let's see. Have to thaw out the puff pastry for about 40 minutes. Okay. 
let it thaw out so you know just because i'm getting older doesn't mean i don't matter doesn't mean my life doesn't matter and that's what i'm saying to a lot of my more mature um i'm a tour subscribers you know you know but the days we have left because we still have several decades most of us and you know you want it to be a good quality of life and uh, so we just have to help help our bodies along at this point in my life there's really you know i guess maybe the way the food is made now and i'm not i don't farm and I don't go to the farmer's market as much. So, you know, food just doesn't taste as good anyway. All of this, we're just addicted to it. Okay, so here's one sheet. I'm going to put it here in this pan. I'm going to let it thaw out for, they said about 40 minutes. Because it's still, you know, it won't, it won't unfold without cracking. And I, I appreciate Pepperidge Farm putting that information on there. All we asked for, like in the 70s, a lot of that, a lot of people were, it was a lot of deceptive advertising. It was like people like, uh, I can't think of his name. He ran for president too. And uh, he was like big in the 70s and 80s, truth in advertising. So he had a lot to do with... Uh, these companies, just being true, just tell us what you got, tell us what you're putting in these products, and then we can make the decision as adults. And I can't think of his name, but I really liked him. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stir fry these vegetables in my cast iron skillet, grate the cheese, prep this, and wait on the uh, puff pastry to do. To defrost. Okay, family, I've unrolled my puff pastry and it comes, you fold it like this, and it has some parchment paper in it. So I just, once this out, out of the freezer for a few minutes, you know, just give it some time to thaw out a little bit where you can easily unfold it and then press it out a little bit. I'm going to try to, I'm going to make a pan pizza. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bake this off first. I want it to puff up. get remarks about how it's annoying. And I don't use latex. And when I'm cooking off camera, I put my gloves on. Like a regular pizza, how you make a little crust here, make a little border, whatever I forgot what you call it. That was one of my first jobs too. I worked at a gourmet bistro. It was heavy, we did heavy, heavy on the pizza. I think it was called Charlie's Pizza, and then we we so served like burgers and stuff on the side, but the main draw was the pizza. 
Okay, so just, you know, fit it in there. And I'm gonna put it, I have my oven preheating at 375. I'm gonna put it in there until this, till this warms up, browns up and puffs up. Then we'll come back. And I'll put my toppings on afterwards. Okay, family, I put the puff pastry in the oven. I let it puff up, it's deflating already. But I put it in there for about five minutes so it can start puffing. It was really puffed up, so it's um, just to take the chill off of it. And so now I'm going to start building my pizza. I'm going to bring you guys up. And I took that can of tomato sauce. It, I purchased it without any salt in it. So it had no added salt to it. So with all these other chemicals and stuff going on in our food, we just have to try to balance it out. And so, um, so I added a bunch of onion powder, Italian seasoning, and garlic powder to my tomato paste and a smidge of, of uh, salt. Smells good, tastes better. Kind of doctor up that tomato sauce or tomato paste to your taste. Because the store purchased, the store bought ones already has so much sugar in them. Just evenly spread it out. Grated my cheese. I told you guys my first job was in a pizza shop. I may see like if I worked in a mall, I don't know, like is Tanya working today? Because I made the prettiest pizzas. I would hook them up to. I didn't abuse the company's profits, but I, you know, know how to make it so where people don't feel like they're being skipped. Okay, now I use that whole, uh, that whole bag of, uh, of vegetables. I stir fried them and make sure that I, uh, you know, all the moisture is evaporated. That pan's getting heavy. Spread that out. Let's see, can I get any more? So I think these the puff pastry, they're good to keep in your freezer. The kids want a fun, different type of pizza. You keep a good, uh, Keep one bag of those vegetables. You can add jalapenos on there or okay. I'm adding my 
pepperoni. We used to go through pizzas when I worked in that pizza shop. Um, I mean, I, I was in the back just making pizzas like crazy in minutes. Garnish with a little Italian seasoning. It smells wonderful. So here is our pizza. So I'm going to bake it. In a 375 degree oven till it gets puffed up and bubbly. Okay, family, the pizza's ready. Okay, let me lay down. A... Yeah, that's perfect. Y'all know what I say. Yes, ma'am. Turn this timer off. This is a cool pan so that you guys can see it. And here is our pizza. Looks like any other pizza, except for it's a little puffier. I love it. And let me see, I'm gonna take a little bit because I'm using a different device to film this on and I I'm not doing clips so I just need a, I need a thumbnail I don't need it to be obvious I didn't spray this either I didn't spray the pan Here to crunch. I smell all the peppers and I smell that Italian seasoning. Holds up very well. Trying to make it neat, so um, okay. All right, so let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's the bottom, so it browns up very nicely. Okay. Mm hmm. This 
the way to go. That's awesome, y'all. tomato sauce up. That piece of sauce is better than anything you can buy. Okay, guys. So here is our puff pastry pizza. All those beautiful layers of pastry just really sets this up. This would be great for Super Bowl party, appetizers, your movie night. It's really, I'm really glad I did this. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate your support. And if you like my vibe, hit subscribe, join the tribe, and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified the next time I upload any new content. Thank you so much, my tastemakers. And I appreciate your support. And uh, please don't hesitate to make any comments or suggestions in the comments section, okay? Love you guys. See you in my next video. Bye. Bye, Mom. All right, it's time for my brunch.